Hello and welcome to our ninth episode of Nitro On Demand. This week we check out three amazing SUVs that have been upgraded by some of the world's best known tuners. But first, a new world record has been smashed. Time now for Nitro Boost. General reminder to all of you who are fans of JDM and KDM culture, we're running our Nitro Show Off giveaway campaign starting from the 24th of August to the 13th of September. For all the details, visit us at www.nitro.com. All right, starting us off in this episode's segment of Nitro Boost, where we check out the latest and hottest news blowing up, a new world record has been broken. Meet Johnny Davis, a British stunt rider who recently participated in the Straightliners World Wheelie Records. As you can see here, he popped up into a high chair wheelie position while revving up to an astonishing top speed of 175.785 km per hour for a distance of 200 meters to set a new world record for the fastest high chair wheelie. Now that was some impressive skills, but remember this, he's a trained professional stunt rider not something for us to attempt, unless of course, you're of equal caliber. For those of you with an itching, go take an ice cold shower. All right, let's continue on with the show. It has been precisely nine years and 11 months since I first visited the Brabus headquarters in Bottrop, Obenhausen, Germany. In this past decade, some things have changed. The SLS is no longer the flagship model for AMG. My fashion sense has improved, albeit slightly, but there are things that have remained the same. Hairstyle is still consistently good looking, but more importantly, Brabus is still one of the leading tuners, restorer, and manufacturer in the world. First unveiled a year ago, the new Mercedes-Benz GLB class has been extremely well received, and in my personal opinion, will be one of the best-selling SUVs from the German manufacturer for its practicality and efficiency. So here's a look at what the designers and engineers at Brabus have done to the GLB. Now, because the GLB was created as a small five or seven seater SUV, primarily for younger families, the strategic move by Brabus to not go overboard with their upgrade options was a wise one. The exterior package includes the power beams to blind everyone ahead of you, front lip inserts that will most probably not improve your aerodynamics, a B for Brabus front grille to increase the perceived value of this SUV. A rear spoiler for slightly improved downforce, which you will not need nor feel, and a set of quad exhaust tips for a more dynamic and sporty appearance. You'll also get to choose either 18, 19, or 20 inch wheels to complete the Brabus look. However, I will strongly caution anyone from getting the 20 inch wheels like you see here, because you will be running slightly lower profile tires, which will translate to slightly less comfortable ride. Brabus also offers two variants of springs. The height lowering version will see your GLB drop a good 30 millimeters, while the height raising version will, as the name suggests, raise the ride height by 35 millimeters. At the moment, the only performance upgrade available is for the GLB 250 by way of the Brabus Power Extra B25 plug and play module, which sees the horsepower bump up from 224 to 270. Torque is also increased from 350 to 430. Finally, a century sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.6 .6 seconds. Sadly, neither Mercedes nor Brabus pays us for all this. But the truth of the matter is, if you're out looking for a practical SUV and plan to tune or customize it, you need not look further. Unless you have a shitload of money. Because next on the list is another German tuner known for their precision. But instead of specializing in Mercedes-Benz like Brabus, these guys focus on Volkswagens and Audis. You got it, up Sportsline. Precisely 9 years and 11 months ago, a few days after visiting the Brabus headquarters, a few weeks before Instagram was launched, I took three separate overnight Deutsche Bahn trains, spent over 14 hours, and traveled over 600 kilometers to arrive at Kempton, Germany, where up Sportsline is located. Still rocking the same hairstyle, we checked out their first ever wide body Audi Q5. Both Audi and Opt have come a long way since, and in celebration of their upcoming 125th anniversary, the awesome people at Opt have unveiled their latest RSQ8R based on the Audi RSQ8. 
As you see here, not only is this pristine example painted in our favorite colors, but the complete aero package also includes a front lip, front skirting, mirror covers, side skirts, wheelhouse ventilation, fender extensions, a rear skirt, and a rear deck spoiler, all crafted out from the finest carbon fiber, making an already aggressive looking super SUV even more aggressive. And if you don't think that size matters, well, it does. This RSQ8R runs on 23-inch, weight-optimized, flow-foamed wheels wrapped in 295-35 tires. All your high-touch areas on the inside have also been further upgraded from the steering wheel to the gear knob, from the armrest to the seats, and even the floor mats and the door sills have been customized, allowing you and all your passengers to know immediately that this isn't a regular Q8, isn't a regular SQ8, isn't a regular RSQ8 but the highest possible version and upped RSQ8R. Under the hood, thanks to an upgraded intercooler network, a full exhaust system, and their well-known engine management approach, performance has been improved to a staggering 740 horsepower from a mere 600. Torque has also been increased to 920 newton meters from 800. Maximum velocity, 315 kilometers per hour. Sentry sprint to 100 kilometers per hour from a standstill, 3.4 seconds. This puts the RSQ8R squarely into supercar territory. In fact, this will be the only view you see, even if you're in the more powerful Lamborghini Urus, a close cousin to the Audi RSQ8. So if you are an owner of the Lamborghini Urus, surely you wouldn't want to be bested at a drag race when one of these pulls up. What you gonna do? The solution is now available, and it comes in the form of Hennessy. No, 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 no. Not the French Cognac, which, by the way, is owned by Louis Vuitton. The H representing Hennessy. I'm talking about the guys from Hennessy Performance, all the way over in the US of A. A visit to their website and you'll quickly see that these guys don't mess around. They are hardcore in every sense of the word. So what happens when they're given a twin turbocharged 4-liter V8 engine? They kick it up a notch and go all out. The base engine is from Volkswagen but it's also used in Audi, Bentley, and Porsche. In the bone stock Lamborghini Urus, it punches out 641 horsepower with 850 meters of torque, but an upgraded exhaust system and a complete rework of the engine control unit, the Hennessy Performance tuned Super SUV now develops well over 750 horsepower with 990 meters of torque. According to founder and CEO John Hennessy, if 641 horsepower is good, then 750 horsepower is better. Truer words cannot be said. If you are to unleash this beast from a standstill, it will hit 100 kilometers per hour one whole second quicker than the stock version in just 2.65 seconds. That's all we got for you in this week's episode of Nitro Boost. Up next, we take a quick look at last weekend's Bangkok Grand Motor Sale. Enjoy. That's a wrap for this week's episode. Please remember to like and share this video if you've enjoyed it. As always, thank you for spending your time with me. Hong here, signing off.
Hier haben wir das Bildschirm B16 PSS 10 Gewindefahrwerk, wie es auch in dem Audi A3 von der INA verbaut ist, auf der Vorderachse mit der Upside-Down-Technologie, wo man dann die Einstellmöglichkeiten der Zug- und Druckstufe zueinander parallel, individuell, schnell und effektiv dann abstimmen kann. Die Federn entsprechend progressiv gewickelt, sodass ich alltagstauglich als auch sportlich das Fahrzeug nutzen kann.